Hey everyone, welcome back to Math 301. And today we're talking about planar graphs, which is in chapter 11. Planar graphs is one of my favorite topics. So let's start by talking about what we mean for a graph to be planar. So we say a graph is planar if it can be drawn in the plane so that none of the edges cross each other, except at vertices. So we're going to say that a graph G is planar, means uh, G can be drawn on the plane, which you can visualize as being a flat piece of paper that goes on as long as you want in every direction without any uh, crossing edges. So one thing that's a little subtle about this is that whether or not a graph is planar is an, intrins an intrinsic attribute of a graph, but it, whether it looks planar or not depends on how you draw it. So for example, here's the graph K4, and it's drawn with crossing edges. But we can redraw the graph of K4 by just moving this edge up and over. And this is the same graph. And for this, sometimes people like to draw this graph even more symmetrically. Here's also a graph of, of K4. Uh, and sometimes people like to draw it as the tetrahedron graph. Uh, this is not planar, but this is a, another way of thinking about K4 is that it's the tetrahedron. Okay, so this, this version here is planar. And so we say that K4 is planar, even though sometimes we've drawn it so that it has edges crossing. So the next thing we might want to ask is, is K5 planar? And you can see that this is going to be a more difficult question because we have a lot more edges to work with and a lot more crossings. So we could start by drawing, drawing K5. One thing to notice is this vertex is now connected to all the others, so I don't have to worry about blocking it off. So I could draw this around here, but I still need to get an edge from this vertex to this vertex and an edge from this vertex. Well, I can at least draw a few more edges here. So I could finally connect this one to here and I could connect this one to here. Okay, so this is look, oh no, I have too many edges. One, this one's already connected to this one. Okay, so now this, this vertex is completely worked out, but I, and this vertex is done. They each have four edges, but now I need to draw a edge from here to here. And there's really no way of doing that without either crossing this edge or without crossing this edge. So I can't really figure out how to do this without this intersection point here. And so we will see later on that as much as you try, it is not possible to do this. So K5, the answer is no. No matter how, how well you try to draw K5 on a piece of paper, you're always gonna have crossing edges. Now here's one thing that's kind of cool is, and this is not about planar graphs, it's a more advanced topic called graphs on a torus. And what a torus looks like is it looks like the surface of a donut. One way to make a torus is to take a piece of paper and then glue the top edge to the bottom edge. 
That then makes a tube. And then what we're gonna do with that tube is we're gonna glue the left edge, the left end of the tube to the right end of the tube. And that makes a torus. And just to make it a little more clear, I'll sort of show you how these pink and green loops look on the torus. The pink one goes around that way and the green one goes around through the hole of the donut. So you can see that the outside of this donut, it's an empty donut. There's no, no filling in the middle. It's just the frosting. But that, that when you cut open that donut in half, you get a tube. And then when you slice that along one side of the tube, you get um, uh, something flat where the left and the right edges are identified and the top and the bottom edges are identified. And one, one thing that's kind of cool about uh, uh, the torus is that if a graph is not planar, you might be able to draw it on a torus. Some of you might have played the game of Pac-Man. It's a very, a very old computer game. I don't know if you remember that on a Pac-Man board, if Pac-Man goes up off the top edge of the board, it comes back in on the bottom and vice versa. And if Pac-Man goes off on the right side of the board, then it comes back in on the left and vice versa. So a torus is really the same as a Pac-Man board. Okay, so we're gonna now, so K5, is K5 planar? No. Now we're gonna go back and see, could we draw it on a torus? And we could try, we could try to draw it on this torus, which is, in three dimensions, but it might be easier to draw it on the Pac-Man board and just uh, be aware that if we go off the top, then we come back in on the bottom. And if we go off on the left, we come back in on the right. Okay, so here's the top and the bottom are pink and here are the left and the right. I'm sure green. Now, in order to work with this, we need to back up a minute because when we drew this edge, we blocked off this vertex completely. And so, so we need to, um, oh, but that maybe that's, and that made it hard to draw this one. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this edge, which was definitely problematic because it had the crossing. We're also gonna get rid of this edge because that one, that one blocked off that vertex. And so we're gonna get rid of those two edges and we need to add those two edges back, back in. Let's add them back in in purple. So we need to get from this vertex on the right to this vertex on the left and bottom, but we, um, and we need to get from this one to this one, but we can't block it off either the others. So what we're gonna do is from this one, we're gonna go up, come back in on the bottom and then go here. All right, so what we've just done is to connect these two vertices without blocking off the remaining one. And then we'll use the left right property to go off here and to go back in here. So is K5 planar? No, um, but the really cool thing is that it can be drawn, but K5 can be drawn on a torus. Without edges crossing. So in the later sections of this chapter, we are going to completely describe planar graphs in terms of Euler's formula, of counting the number of vertices, the number of edges, and the number of faces. And later on in the chapter, we'll come back to graphs on a torus and think about, um, think about which graphs can be drawn on a torus. So one thing you could try is to look at the graph B33, the bi complete bipartite graph with three vertices on the left and three vertices on the right. 
and ask yourself, is this complete bipartite graph, B33, is it planar? Can you draw it on a plane without edges crossing? And if not, can you draw it on a torus or a Pac-Man board? All right, that's it for today. 